I'm just going to go through the process of doing some lip syncing with Lip Sync Pro. Now the purpose of doing lip syncing is to basically figure out what mouth shapes you're going to use when you're uh, making a, a, an animation and usually the process is you record the audio first and then once you've done that go through and break down the dialogue and that way you can plan which mouth shapes you're going to need while you're filming. So what I've got here is the audio track and the audio file I'm going to use is uh, in this case a WAV file. The next thing I need is the mouth set. Now this is a representation of the mouths that uh, I'm going to use on set and basically um, I'm just using images here. You can make your own uh, sets, uh, mouth shape sets, but as I said we'll uh, just use the ones built into the software. So in Lip Sync Pro and I'll open up the cartoon mouth set here. I'll click open. Great, so I've got my audio file, my mouth set I'm going to use, and I'm also going to set the frames per second. And that's how, how many frames I'm going to film per second while I'm animating. And I want to do the same number of frames per second while I'm doing my lip sync analysis. Great, I'll click OK. Now what happens straight away here is you can see we have uh, the audio file here shown as a waveform and I can scroll up and down through that and you can see the yellow lines here moving as I do that. I can play the I audio back. I want that one. Okay, I can, uh, I'm using the keyboard shortcuts here to step, step through the frames. So I'm using <laughs> keys 4 and 5 now to step through one frame at a time. So what I'm going to do first of all is step right back to the very first frame. So I'll grab the uh, slider bar here and move it right up to frame frame number one. And I want to use the closed mouth shape. Uh, so I've got one here called closed and I'll, I'll use that. Now I could use just the shortcut keys here too and when you get familiar with your mouth shape set you can just hit the corresponding key on the keyboard. And now I can step through my audio and I can just start to hear there the mouth needs to open to make a noise. So I'll start on this frame here and it sounds like I so I'll, I'll start with that. Now I'm getting a W sound so I'll choose the W and I'm, it seems to have gone to a O oh. and then we're getting a N I can scroll down a bit further and now the mouth's closed. Okay, let's have a look and see that how that's working now. So I'll, I'll just use my mouse to click and drag and I'll create a loop area here. It's called a loop there in grey and if I press the play loop button I want... I want... Okay, so I seem to have missed the audio there. Uh, uh, so I need a ah, uh, more of a ah. Uh. Let's try that. So I'll draw that loop area again. Play I it. want I want So it seems to be I want the W is coming in too late, so I can right click on that mouse shape here in the grid and move that frame up two frames. And I'll try that again. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Alright, let's say I'm happy with that. I want that one. Okay, so that's the next bit I want to do here, this, uh, that one. Now you can see as I draw a loop area, the grid space down here automatically jumps to that spot. I could also draw a loop area uh, here and you can see the waveform part of the image here updates as well. So now let's step through this part again. I'm using the, uh, the 5 that. and 4 keys. <laughs> now this has got the v, which is the tongue behind the teeth mouth shape so I'll double click there. And then we're getting a w sound again. Hold that and then I'll click 
close it at the end. Okay, well, let's, let's see how that's looking. That one. I want that one. Okay, now it's easy to see there that uh, it's all happening a bit too late. So what I can do is click and drag on all these frames and I can move them all up two frames. I can just draw my loop area there again and play that. That one. I want that one. I want that one. Great. So let's say I'm happy with that. What can I do with it next? Well, I can. Uh, I want to be able to use that for my animation, so I can come in and export movie, and it'll export out of these different dimensions and keep that frame rate of 15 frames per second. Uh, and I'll just click OK. I'll give it a name. And I can now bring that into Stop Motion Pro and use it. I could, of course, also uh, use the print function here, where I can print it out as a, in a printed form and be able to scribble notes on on the uh, X sheet, which is another option. Uh, and of course, I could export it to the Stop Motion Pro X sheet prompt tool, and uh, that's again very handy for using within Stop Motion Pro.